if I've punched any steering wheels recently right. or um, fought anybody. Uh, so it's probably that was one of the things that stood out. It sounds like from that lesson. Um, but uh, if you're wondering what that's all about, well, Paige and I shared um, just about having a vision for your marriage and particularly fighting well. Um, talked about some of that. <laughs> now, I think one of the things that's worth saying is we weren't saying go out and look for a fight and fight each other, but just obviously <laughs> the reality that you'll have arguments, you'll have challenges, and important to learn how to work through those um, and not just let things fester. So fighting well was one important thing. We also talked about loving on purpose, loving well, and just as women, understanding the importance of not using our intimacy as a weapon in our marriages, but seeing it as an incredible gift that God has given to bond us as husband and wife. And um, using, for me personally, using scriptures that God um, using scriptures in the Bible to pray over my marriage, to pray over our intimacy, to pray during our intimacy, some really powerful scriptures, which we shared about in the video, so you could watch it and see what I mean by that. Yeah, and then finally, so fighting on purpose, we talked about loving on purpose, and then serving um, on purpose, and for loving on purpose from the men's side, just the importance of really being interested in not only meeting our, our needs, but the needs of our uh, wives. And that's really important, that it's just mutually um, beneficial and, and blessing to, to both. Um, and then serving on purpose. So serving well and just recognizing that God has given our wives some amazing gifts, that God's given us some amazing gifts. And together, it's such a powerful combination for making a difference in um, our community. So. And then we ended with encouraging everyone to think about having a marriage vision statement or a marriage mission statement and really just giving that to God, fasting about it, you know, working on it together, praying over it and just committing it to God and having that as a purposeful uh, goal for your marriage because we realize that if we're not building our marriages on purpose, then we just drift yeah. to till death do us part. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're purposeful and really kind of put in passion and fire into our marriages together, having the same vision, the same goal, being on the same page, then actually we'll get to some really incredible places on purpose. So, yeah. Marvellous. Thank you. Tell me. <laughs> so I think, um, so we, um, we dealt with the plumbing of our marriages a bit more specifically. Um, so we talked about um, faith, hope, and love, as in yes. in First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Uh, you know, I think in many ways it was. Um, I tried to say a sense of we've seen other marriages reach many years in. And people really start to question whether they should be together. You know, is this really the right person? And the idea of faith was really that sense of God puts you yeah. together forever and you are meant to stay together. And there are moments when you question that, but you have to absolutely believe it mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, relationships you have with other Christians and people can play a part in, in helping you through that, but you also have to take a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, I, I think on the other side of it is um, like the love and hope as well is um, from our chip parenting point of view, because things won't always happen the way you plan them to be, even though you do everything you possibly mm -hmm. can. I think it's just um, loving unconditionally and having the hope that you know your children. We'll make it to heaven. So we talked about, you know, the fact that two of our children aren't Christians, and you know, that while it's a challenge to us, you know, it doesn't excuse us from persevering still, mm -hmm. and, and still holding that hope that, um, that, that, that what, the way we brought them up, that you know, teach each other the way to go, and they will stick with it. 
And the love bit for me was particularly about forgiveness. You know, um, Peter talks about love covering over a multitude of sins. And uh, your marriage is somewhere where you do sin a lot uh, against each other. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you have to forgive. I think Malcolm summed up our message better than we wrote it up. <laughs> forgive even, even when the other person doesn't want to repent, particularly. You still need to be able to forgive. And, uh, and that's a very sort of important part of, um, of, I think, of loving at the end of the day, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm an apology, because obviously, obviously I've got just one half <laughs> here um, today, half. so, uh, uh, the better half. <laughs> <laughs> Mika was asking me where to do was. I had to stop because I know he started in one city, which was Zurich, and he's now um, he's in Sofia. And then I thought that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone to Sofia. No, no. no. <laughs> 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 is she? Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure that that's really clear. Um, was that Bulgaria? So just a reminder that we um, were inspired by a scripture that wasn't specifically about marriage. It's um, in Romans uh, 12 uh, at the beginning where it talks about being transformed and have, um, having a renewed mindset and not conforming to the pattern of the world, which from our experience, regretfully, the pattern of the world with marriage is often that after a number of years, people decide to go their separate ways. And um, obviously, for Tiddo and myself, we've been together many, many years. We've known each other for 40 years, but we married for 34. And it could be, and it has been, tempting to just really not trust that you can carry on mm-hmm. transforming into something incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as we get older, a lot of things change, you know starting from our physical bodies, um, and those can be challenges. Um, But the fact of the matter is that God has a a better plan, and we were just basically sharing how, whilst we'd been through some tough times, that thought is really inspiring and needs to be, we felt like, you know, we had to have that determination and faith that God's not just going to keep us together, he's going to transform us. And and I I finished with this beautiful quote, um, which is in C.S. Lewis, that talks about, you know, how God comes into us and into our marriages as though we're living houses, and it can feel like we're being broken apart, but in the end he's creating this incredible palace where he's going to come and live. And for me that's been a real sort of inspiration to carry that with me. And... um, it has been a really transformative journey and we are you know, hoping and praying that it will continue to be because you know, we may feel challenged that next year we've got a, you know, the big 6-0 but prayerfully we'll make it to the big 8-0 and what is marriage going to look like then? Mm. It's got to still be transforming for us so that's the basis in which we, we share. Thank you. Um, something that I want just to appreciate that uh, I think Joan came into your class when you talked about uh, Romans 12 verse 2 you said that you don't conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed <coughs> by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will mm. and Obi mentioned as well about uh, just having some scriptures to guide us um, so if there's a particular scripture that helps you in your marriage, that's a good thing to share tonight. Mm-hmm. One thing I would like to share is uh, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 9, one of my theme verses, my life. Um, it says, enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this uh, meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. Um, for this is, this is your lot in life. Um, and it's, there's a sort of a, an irony there, but there's sort of a truthful irony, which I really appreciate and love that. So uh, that was something I felt came through with our classes, that the scriptures really give us this faith, truth, and love. It's amazing to have the scriptures to build our, our lives on. But uh, maybe you have something to share. Um, something you'd like to share with the group or something you'd like to talk about 
um, that has surfaced from the classes. Uh, this is really good, Mika. Uh, I think um, key things that we've learned, and, and we've got a lot of help from, from, from especially from Tidu and John, but many, many couples, and we wouldn't be together if, 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 if we didn't have the other people in our lives, and, and, mm. and don't be afraid to ask mm. or I shout. I you for a long uh, time. No, Tim gave us three three months to, when he married us. <laughs> <laughs> he said, there, there was some doubt. Um, not, not just, uh, but many years later, here we are. <laughs> yes, and, and, and it was to a point, and, and, and we were fighting really well. To a point where, where we, we, we shared, shared this one with, with Obi and Pedro that, that they, they're not the only ones who, who do things or break things. And, 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 um, and, uh, and many a times, um, Anna Kaisa would, would um, have to call Joan or Tidu and hands the phone over to here. Like, and they say, OK, Donna, stop now. And tonight, 9 o'clock, at the at the Rattan sofa in the conservatory, so there we go and sit like little. Sorry, but it, it's it's having that kind of open relationship where you can be yes. real. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And and whatever has happened or will happen, it's all right. And then then you go in, and and then we went there back next week. <laughs> and the week. Mm -hmm. But we learned. Yeah. And and. It's hugely. You can't buy some, something like that with money, mm -hmm. first of all. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing, I think, the key thing, apart from having these relationships, is is the communication. So learn to communicate and communicate. And communicate. But not only that, but also you need to create opportunities to communicate. And I think that's probably the, the one thing that we've learned together with Anna Kaiser is that we actively create opportunities mm. to communicate or to be together where there's an opportunity to talk. Like we, we, we travel quite a lot in the car on business, and so we're in, in a car, you can either talk or not talk, but it creates an opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and often when we have that, things naturally come out. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't turn into a fight, but it, it is uh, mm -hmm. voicing considerations or, or concerns or or sometimes whatever you're feeling, but, but bringing them up and then being, especially on my side, and not being too afraid to actually tackle these things. That's so, a very good yeah. thing. Something that has, yeah. um, <laughs> just the way we can work together and be a, a family of, of married couples, um, able to be with each other and help each other, that's a really beautiful thing. So um, it is something very special in the church that we shouldn't be frightened of. Thank you, Miko. Um, yes, please, Marissa. Yeah, I think something that personally convicted me was, and I'm, I apologize because I can't remember who shared it. I don't know if it was going on, really, but about how easily we judge each other in the marriages. And I, it, I didn't really see it that way, I guess. But I think when you know we look at there is there's I mean there's so many great scriptures about this and I think the you know, one that convicts me um, in, in Luke six is just where it says do not judge mm -hmm. because you know you will be judged the way that you judge others mm -hmm. and I think for us I think we realise that there is a lot of judgment without realising it easily like you know you just make assumptions or you don't assume the best and I think that's really helped us, it was real, real eye-opener. And I think just having a relationship in the church to help us is amazing. I think, I, I don't know where we would have been without openness yeah. in our marriages and sharing, like brutally, you know, sharing and often being quite brutally open, honest, mm -hmm. and real. And I think I, I just, we just, I don't really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, So That's a great... Remind a great strand that's come out of the class. Thank you for bringing that out. Yeah. Anyone else? <clears throat> Do we have any more thoughts? Yeah, please. I have a question. Oh. Someone wants to <laughs> say what they think. Well, and one of the things that, you know, uh, and I think you touched on this, Tony and Karen, that um, being married a few years, you change. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, you're exactly the same. 
as the person you first married. And, but other things change, and you go through transitions. And I think for Penny and I, the last year or two, we've been going through feeling like we're changing into different people. Not in a bad way, but just and, but then the adjustment of this isn't quite the same person, mm -hmm. and that's creative and can be exciting, but it's also quite destabilizing. Mm -hmm. I wondered if you had any thoughts on the best ways to navigate that as you go through that, unless I'm the only one. From when I think about what we would think about it, is that still believing constantly mm -hmm. that it's the route you're supposed to be on mm -hmm. and you're becoming probably, a, I guess, a better person? I don't know, mm -hmm. a better person. Well, have to ask Penny about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I guess that, I think that that's it, isn't it? It's, it's to, I mean, you know, Karen and I don't think about where, where we're going to be in 10 years' time at the, at the checkout. Arguing with each other, <laughs> yeah, 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 hitting each other with the, the, the fish fingers or whatever. But I think that that, that you, the longer you're together, you evolve into what you need to be more for each other. I think at the end of the day, and I think yeah. you don't, change is an important part. Now, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely went on a sort of transformative journey because counselling makes you do that and I, I was very aware when I was going through it how difficult this was and to do. Um, he can't be speaking for himself here today but it's in order to raise him up <laughs> anyway um, that what I became very conscious was that he he developed different listening skills um, so that you know if I was saying something about the way I was feeling because you know we know that it shouldn't be an accusation it's you know you don't go in communicating well you've done that that's made me it's about things that I was going through that um, you know being being a sort of pr protective wanting to lead well sometimes that was hard for him to hear because he just wanted to make everything right but actually it was really helpful for him just to sit and really, really listen, because it ultimately wasn't an accusation. It was about just me figuring out stuff for myself. So I think the ability to, to really, um, it was just really gracious, just really listen, uh, which kind of isn't his strength. You know, he's very much a doer, gets on and does. So he really developed his listening skills and gave an awful lot of his time, which he doesn't have a lot of, and I think that, was hugely valuable to me. I don't know if it's helpful to hear, but it took a lot of time, a lot of chats, which was good ultimately because you know we felt closer to myself. Mm. That was our experience. Mm. I think um, I thought I came up with this really unique phrase called rescripting, only to be told by our friend Tony Shumbi in the north that it was it already existed anyway so I was really <laughs> disappointed but I, when I turned 40 last year I just I felt like for the last decade or so I had become morphed into Obi Lamazikora Kobe and I didn't exist I was Obi Lamazikora Kobe um, and my life had become about Obi Lamazi Korokobi. <laughs> and I remember turning there are a lot of men. And I remember turning 40 and feeling very down. Because I thought, who am I? What do I want? What am I about? What do I enjoy? We had just moved here. I felt very lonely, very down, very fluid. And I think something that helped me was to own the fact that I was changing. And it would have been very easy to blame Obi, and I did want to blame Obi. You have it all, you have the wife, the boys, the children, the job, the, you have it all. And to make it about him. And I remember us getting with John and Rose, and I don't know which of them said it, because sometimes they both say it, and it's hard to know who says what. But I remember profoundly, something they said was, Obi is not responsible for your happiness. And I felt like somebody had shot me in between the eyes. But I also felt there was a huge sigh of relief from Obi, like, oh, tell me, please. And, um, I, I did it. I, I felt it. 
But I think in that moment of what, but that's the ideal I bought into. I bought into the, you make each other happy. It's happily ever after. I bought into that. When we got married, I was 25 and Ubi was 24 was 24 so we were young and very inexperienced but I remember feeling like God was also saying I will help you become the woman you want to be mm. don't put that on your be he he has no power necessarily to transform you into who you want to be you take ownership you take responsibility and I think for me owning who I wanted to be I love Zumba okay sign up for a Zumba class I love blogging get back into blogging Owning my change took pressure off Obi, so I wasn't blaming him. Um, and I think the more joy I found in my life, the more joy I was experiencing in our life. Mm. That helped. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can we anybody else like to mention so Brenda, please. Well, it was a long time since I was married, but, um, <laughs> when Mike was alive, I think I was in Manchester Church, and I prayed, I said to someone, I'm praying so hard for you to change, and that person said to me, have you prayed for yourself to change? <laughs> 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 and then I, I prayed for me to change, so Mike seemed to change. Mm-hmm. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, sharing stuff that helps us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Questions. Yeah. Oh, well, I think you said it really really surfaces from the class and <laughs> anything that we can share. Yeah, sorry. I've got been in all the classes, but I've just been thinking about stuff that, that helped me, and I think um, one thing that you guys have shared with us is praying together. Um, you know, doing lots of prayers together, and, and I think that has really helped me and Robert over the years. Like when we're driving or on our way somewhere, or if something happens, we sit and pray. So I think that's one thing that's really helped us. And um, with us being a young family now and having two small children, something that Tony and Karen has in the past um, said to us, and I think Tony said to us, is like just give each other a break, <laughs> you know, and just, just you know be in the time that you're in, so that things sort of just relax in the stage of life that you're in. Because I think sometimes we want to have the life of somebody who's got grown up kids or no kids. (laughs) Especially, I'm talking to people like me who's got little kids and, you know, your life is so taken up by them. And I think it's just to embrace whatever stage of life you are in. And for us right now, it's having small children, so that is like one minute in our life. But it's great, because they're soon going to be not bothering with us, so we're just really embracing that. I think that's just, you know, I think it's really helped us. Thank you. Um, yeah, please. I think mine would be a question to the panel, and I would like to introduce, introduce, introduce myself. My name is Victor Olet. I live in Bracknell. I was introduced to this church by Obi's friend, who I work with, who is called Alfred. I don't know what you in know. East in East Some, London. Some. So uh, I got a call from Obi. Obi said, We have like a meeting in Bracknell where you live. Would you mind coming over? I didn't know what the meeting was about. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit stuck in traffic. I called him and said, I'll be a little bit late. I thought maybe I'll go home and come with my missus. I thought something new, but mm. I tuck it with your pattern as well. So <laughs> now I'm here. It's a, I'd just like to ask the panel, say, about relationships, what, what causes the barrier between communication between a, a man and a wife? And if that, that cause is there, how can we overcome it? How can we overcome the barrier? So just to repeat the question, what causes a barrier yeah. between... Communication between husband and wife, mm-hmm. and how can we overcome it? And really, it's a good question. Yeah, so that is a great question. Um, I mean, what? <laughs> I, I mean, no, go on. No, no, I think one of the things that Karen and I have talked about a lot is <laughs> letting things go unsaid, mm. I think, for any amount of time because. Keeping the peace, trying to keep the peace. Keeping the peace. Because you don't want to make a big deal of it and it builds up. Mm-hmm. 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 We do that a lot. 
<laughs> sort of thing, you know, you, you kind of you have a feeling and you don't express it and mm -hmm. it goes on and on and then eventually it comes to explosion point mm -hmm. sort of thing and it, it's, it's just something that's totally irrelevant. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's me, me usually that explains. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, think that, <laughs> I think the communication thing is to keep communicating mm -hmm. is, is the thing, is whenever you feel something to... There's never the right time to say it, is there? Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes I just said, okay, I just need to tell you this sort of thing. You know, so there's no context whatsoever. It's just the way I feel right now, and you need to express it. Because I think that, that otherwise, you know, it just builds up and then it takes its funny shape. It does. And I think us women can be quite... I don't know what your wife's like. I think Paige is probably similar to me. Yeah, I'm not. Quite scary. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I, so I, I think that depending on where the woman is <laughs> and how she's feeling at the time, you never know what response you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So it's easier sometimes just not to say anything, mm -hmm. and then that that probably so you know where to, where yeah. to go. It's that scripture, isn't it? That talks yes. about having a tight rein on our tongues. Yeah, that's one that always pops into my mind but usually a bit late <laughs> um, I think and also the scripture that talks about you know what causes the quarrels amongst you is the sort of selfish desires which sometimes I can think of that as very negative because obviously being selfish is quite negative but it's also a desire so I think what you're saying is acknowledge that you're feeling something and for me, the challenge is to raise it in mm -hmm. such a way mm -hmm. that I don't lose the, the, the rain on my tongue. Mm -hmm. um, but acknowledge still, because otherwise we just suppress the selfish desire and it never gets addressed. Mm -hmm. And that, that goes, I think, worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, you know, if we decide that we don't have a voice and we don't, you know, we can't express what's going on for us, I think certainly in our marriage it builds to, the, yeah. to mm -hmm. conflict. I think somebody in Sherry Line finally came to 13 years of being married was to give each other the benefits of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and that helped us a lot because we, uh, we had a tendency to, uh, to want to sort of um, mention things that we felt, you know, should be mentioned rather than actually are married to somebody who loves God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that enables us mm -hmm. to sort of work through things a lot more frankly. Mm -hmm. Shiva, anything you'd add to that? No, I, I remember that. That was a good decision. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> that was many years ago. Thirteen, we were married thirteen years and we just moved here and we were driving down Bram's Hill Road. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say being vulnerable as well. So I remember a sister in the East part of the church said once, it's very easy for women to be vulnerable with their girlfriends, to say it like it is and just be very, just to talk about how you really feel. And sometimes I think, obviously Obi is the only man I want to be married to. I don't want to be married again or to anybody else. So why not be vulnerable? Why not learn? to be vulnerable here in this relationship and grow in vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So for example, if Obi's away, then I think, honey, the boys miss you. But actually what I want to say is I miss you. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy to put it on the boys. When are you back? The boys miss you. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's me. And I think getting to that level of vulnerability is very endearing, mm -hmm. um, but it's also very naked because you could think I may be rejected, it might not be the right time, would he understand, I feel like a little child, but actually it, it's very bonding and I think I'm learning, the more vulnerable I am, the more truthful I am in my vulnerability, the more endearing it is and that helps. On, on that note, I wonder, can I ask a question? Yeah. I'm wondering how the men feel about being vulnerable. Yeah. Um, because that's actually what draws me close to my husband, and I see it as quite a struggle for him, because he's been a provider, even 
for his mum since he was very, very little. And it's quite hard for him to be vulnerable. And I'm just wondering what experiences, if any, the men have had with vulnerability great, because yeah. it's quite challenging, I think, for some. Mm-hmm. So we're throwing yeah. it back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody catch, please. <laughs> I remember as a young, young Marit, Pedro would say to me, honey, you don't have to be Superman. Um, but I, I like that, you know, that, that idea of being Superman, I've got it sorted, I've got it covered, you know, I'll provide, I'll take care. Um, but, you know, behind that, there's the question, do I have what it takes, you know, can I, and lots of questions, and it's hard to, over the years I've had to learn to um, not get my validation from either the world or from Peju, but from God, but that's tough as, as a man, and so it is, um, I think it's something that I've been growing in, I mean over the years I've loved Brené Brown's books, and mm-hmm. other people have shared about that, just the gifts of imperfection and learning that actually I, I am enough, so the more I feel I'm enough with God, it's mm-hmm. easier for me to be vulnerable with, with Peju and not be afraid of that uh, rejection. So I think we've had a, a step change in some of that, but it, I think it's a challenge. As mm-hmm. I've never God. learned to cry. Um, I never cried at all because I grew up in this very sort of um, uh, contain family when you didn't express emotions. Mm-hmm. So learning to be to steer into the clouds of emotions mm-hmm. has been huge for me. Mm-hmm. But that's been a really, really ble- great blessing for me mm-hmm. <clears throat> as a man. Just to add, actually, counselling helped me as as well. Just being able to be in, get in touch with some of what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I think coming back to, to John's question, I, I think that's well, at least to me and, and probably to, to many other men, there's, I think there's two aspects. There's one that is, like Obi said, we want to provide. And then oftentimes we fail on bigger things or smaller things. Mm-hmm. And then just dealing with that failure, yeah. accepting that is, is, is really, really hard. Mm-hmm. But I want and I try and do everything I can, but sometimes it's just not enough. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes I don't actually even want to. Mm. Uh, but it's still difficult to say that actually I, I failed. Mm. And then there's the other side is like how do you deal with emotions, deal with emotions, how do you let them come out, because they're, they're there somewhere. Uh, but but it's just like, like a new experience that actually, w- what is this that is coming out? <laughs> and, then, um, and it doesn't have a handle, uh, there's no manual, you can't Google it. Um, and what do I do with it? And I think that's where the women need to be really gentle and, and it's a really delicate situation and where I think it's a lot, almost like a mother and child realize when these first, um, first um, notions come like, oh, oh, what's this one? And, and there's another thing coming up uh, until you get a little bit more of an even keel. Where like, it's, it's like nurturing that those those early buds of emotion that start to come in, and and then once it gets to full blown, actually, that that's really really good. And actually, then it's like actually, honey, you learn to listen and not trying to fix things. I think that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And 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 then you can reflect on that one. And it's like actually, that's very really relieving when you don't actually have to fix things. You just have to sometimes even pretend to listen. Um, <laughs> Give all that secret. Is that on? I can edit it out later, though. Can I ask Karen to close down a prayer? Amen. Father God, Lord, just thank you so much. Thank you for family. Thank you um, just for this group of people in here. Everybody helps each other. It's just amazing, Father. You just couldn't find this anywhere else. Father, thank you for the vulnerability this evening. Thank you for people sharing. Thank you for Tim just for organising it and everything, Lord. I pray that everybody gets a really good weekend as they journey home. And Lord, um, just thank you for everything that you do for us. And I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen.